Hey everyone, and welcome back to Joey's Retro Handhelds. I'm Joey, and today we're going to be doing a deep dive review of the Minis Forum NAB9 Mini PC. Special thanks to Minis Forum for sending this out for review. As usual, they have no input in what I say, and they haven't seen this video ahead of time. But if you're interested in this PC, I have a link to it in the description. Let's talk about specs first, so you have an idea of what this thing can do. Size-wise, it's a pretty small footprint. It's smaller than a DualShock 4 controller, for instance, so it's not very big. And that helps since you can mount this to the back of your monitor, or really any other vase mount, since it has the included bracket and holes and everything on the bottom. Processor-wise, this has an Intel Core i9-12900HK, which we'll look at later to see how it actually performs for gaming and all of that. One thing to note here, with the 12900HK especially, is you lose a few Intel V Pro features, since it's the Essentials package and not the Enterprise package. Does this matter for 99% of you? No, not at all. But for the one person that it does matter for, there you go. For those wondering, it mostly has to do with remote management of the mini PC, but it's typically for corporate or enterprise environments that you would care. Options wise, they sell this bare bones or with 32 gigabytes of RAM, like the model that I have here. Similarly, mine came with one terabyte of storage, but they also have a 512 gigabyte option. Or you can use your own if you're going the bare bones route, or just replace them if you want. They're just standard M2 2280 drives. There also is a 2.5 inch SATA hard drive slot too if you want. The RAM in this is actually super easy to get to. Just push down on the top of the mini PC and you have instant access into everything that you need. It's actually pretty genius. The M2 SSD is also right there as well on the opposite side. But what's also really cool is you can add the 2.5 inch SATA drive right there on the cover. So you just need to screw it in and then bam, you're set. I love how they design these little mini PCs for space. This is using a Wi-Fi 6E network card here, and it also has Bluetooth 5.2 as well. But surprisingly, there's two 2.5 gigabyte LAN ports on this, which is fantastic. Very niche use cases, but not going to say no to another port. I think it might be good for anyone that wants to convert this to a PFSense router, for example. Although there are other niche use cases for dual LAN. It's always amazed me how many ports they can stuff into these little mini PCs, and it's no different here. All of the USB ports are USB 3.2. The front has a Type-C and two Type-A ports, as well as the 3.5mm combo jack. On the back is some more Type-A ports, the two HDMI ports, the dual LAN 2.5GB Ethernet ports, DC power, and two Type-C ports. For video output, the HDMI ports are 2.0, and the Type-C ports acts as display out as well. So that makes four different monitors that you can connect. Price-wise, this will run you around $479 US dollars directly from the Minis Forum website for the 512GB option. And it's around the same price on Amazon.com. Seems extremely reasonable for the package of what you're getting here, it's a really good price. Let's do the unboxing now, and we have the manual and all of that, and of course the actual mini PC. Under all of that is some accessories, so let's go over some of the goodies. There's the power cord and the actual adapter, which is pretty big, so keep that in mind. There's the HDMI cable, of course. We have a VESA mount bracket for you to connect to the back of a monitor, which is great. And some sort of adapter. I'm assuming it's for the SATA drive, but I'm actually not sure what this is. Lastly, we have some screws to connect the SATA drive to the cover, and that's it. So let's get into the good stuff now. Starting with the Geekbench 6 scores first, and we have a single core score of 2298, and a multi-core score of 10,548 for the CPU, which for both of these is the highest for any mini PC that I've reviewed to date. On the GPU side, we have a score of 15439, which again is the highest of any mini PC that I've reviewed. 
That continues on into the Time Spy scores, and we have a score of 1846. Which, so far, so good. All of the boring stuff out of the way, let's take a look at actual real-world performance for gaming, and we'll start with a few benchmark games. Starting with Forza Horizon 5, 1080p, low settings, XESS on performance, and we get an average of 37 FPS. You could likely squeeze out a few more frames by dropping the resolution to 720p. But on to Assassin's Creed Odyssey, and the Assassin's Creed games have been notoriously hard to run, and it's no difference here. 1080p, low settings, and an average of 22 FPS, which isn't very playable. Cyberpunk 2077 was more of the same. 1080p, low settings with XESS on auto, and we're at about 25 FPS. With XESS 1.3, I imagine that number goes up just a bit, but seems like the game is just a bit out of the range of this mini PC. Jumping into Hitman 3, 1080p, low settings, and we have an average of about 30 FPS. Lastly, for Immortals Phoenix Rising, 1080p, low settings, and we have an average of 44 FPS, which is actually pretty good for this game, although the frame rate is a bit bouncy. Enough of the benchmarks, let's jump into a few actual games where we actually play them, and we're going to start with Triangle Strategy, which is a game that I absolutely love, and it hovers around that 60 FPS mark, throughout battle. For a game like this, not always being 60 is more than fine. However, a game that surprised me a bit more was the performance in Tales of Arise. 1080p, low settings, hovering between 40 and 50 FPS throughout battles, and the overworld. For an action game, that's actually pretty good, and it's surprising to see. Jumping into Hades next, and there's no issues at all. Mostly above 200 FPS, but way above most monitors for 144Hz, 165Hz, you have no problem. So it's not something that you need to worry about at all, and it plays perfectly here. With Persona 5 Royal, I left everything on high and was sitting nicely in the 90s range. You could easily cap this at 60 and never drop frames, which is awesome to see. Let's end this off looking at some emulation now. Just want to make sure there's no issues with PS2, with God of War, and yeah, we're running at 1080p at a perfect 60, so PS2 as a whole will be just fine. Let's move on to some higher stuff. Trying Wii U here with Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, and I would have been very surprised if this didn't run perfectly, but thankfully, yeah, it does. Let's try out another Wii U game as well, and we'll start with Super Smash Bros. Brawl. Besides the shader compilation in both games, they run perfectly, so a great PC for Wii U games. Now we get into Xbox 360, and I'm going to start with Forza Horizon. And, well, that just didn't go well. Intel has had issues with Xbox 360 emulation for a long while now. But, just in case, let me try out Lost Odyssey as well. Same story here with Lost Odyssey, so it's just not great for Xbox 360 emulation. PS3 emulation was more of the same. I tried out a few different games and they didn't run very well. Could be the processor, could be the shaders, or a mix of both but I typically don't have a good time with PS3 emulation as a whole anyways, so it's not really a surprise for me. Let's end it all off with Nintendo Switch, and I'll be in docked mode for all of these games. As expected, Super Mario 3D World runs just great. Same issues as Wii U with shader compilation, but once that goes away, you're smooth sailing. Exact same story with Super Mario Odyssey, some shader compilation stutters and all of that, but otherwise you're smooth sailing at a 60 FPS. I didn't have a save on hand for Tears of the Kingdom, and the beginning ran at full speed, but we all know that doesn't really mean anything until you get to the overworld. Honestly, I assume it'll probably be a little bit difficult to run in the overworld as usual, and I would probably place guesses as the frame rate being between the 20 and 30 mark. Let's wrap up this review. Overall, for $479 US dollars, there's a lot of value here. No real limitation on anything for gaming, as well as just general usage, and nothing feels slow or limited. Honestly, I'm just extremely happy to finally review a mini PC that can actually play games, and a lot of them. 
so this was a lot of fun for me to do. That's going to be it for this one. Hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like and sub to help the channel grow, and hope you all have a good one.